This right here is the world's hottest output pickup on the market. This comes in at a whopping 54k ohms. That is the equivalent of four super distortions in the one pickup. It is insane and it has piqued my interest. Sometimes companies contact me and ask me to do different videos for different products and a lot of the time I don't really accept because I don't think I can make an interesting video about the gear. But this was a little bit different. The company that makes this, Algri, which are a uh, parts manufacturer in the UK, they sent me an email and I think it was, it was titled something like this is stupid or something. Um, they wanted to see what I thought of this ridiculously high output pickup. I believe it's the highest output pickup in the world. It's more they wanted to see if it could be done rather than whether it should be done. But I'm interested because I haven't obviously put it in a guitar yet. So this pickup has a hotter output than as far as I can see and they can see anything on the market. 54k ohms. But what does that mean? Well, your standard kind of vintage output pickup, humbucker anyway, would be around 8k ohms. So we're going to measure the output of this pickup. We've got a cable plugged in, volumes all the way up, and that's the only control on this. I will attach ground and hot, and we're getting 8.37. So kind of a vintage output rather than a super hot one, and nowhere close to the pickup that we're going to be putting into this guitar. A standard vintage single coil would be around 4 to 6k ohms. Single coil in this guitar, we can check the output of that. That's obviously going to be significantly less. Let's see what it is. It's 6.75 on the output. And then a more modern, higher output pickup could be from 12 to around 15k ohms. This is kind of your industry standard hot output pickup. This is a Seymour Duncan JB. And when we measure the output we put our ground and our hot and we're getting 15.86 sometimes pickups are exceptionally hot coming in at 16 17 18 uh, there's very rarely any that hit 20 I think there's a bare knuckle that does it um, but this remember 54 K ohms and the immediate difference before we've even plugged it into a guitar it's noticeably heavier it's got a lot of copper and big magnets. This is four pickups in one. Now pickups are kind of the voice of an electric guitar. They're a very important part of it anyway. They pick up the string and they deliver it to the amplifier. And the higher the output means that the harder the amplifier is getting hit, meaning that there's gonna be more distortion, more gain, the amplifier is being pushed. Most of the time people use tube screamers or other external pedals to boost the amplifier further. But I'm just guessing because I haven't put this into a guitar yet, that we're not going to need a tube screamer. We're just going to be replacing a standard 8K or around that vintage output humbucker in this one humbucker, one volume guitar. And uh, we're going to compare. But first I'm going to record a few clips with this guitar through an orange tiny tarot. It's a low wattage amp, it's 15 watts with the switchable down to seven. And that's important because I want to see how far this super high output pickup pushes the amp into power amp distortion on maybe the seven watt setting. So I've recorded a couple of clips on this guitar. There's a clean playing section. There's a crunch playing section. Those are both on 15 watt settings. And then there's a lead played on seven watts. And we're going to recreate that once we put the new pickup in this guitar. So let's do that. Ignore my soldering, I'm not very good at it, but it does have the ability to coil tap or coil split. The, this bot is not like push-pull, so I can't do that, and I don't have an extra switch. But let's be honest, you're not getting a pickup that's got the power of four for split coil sounds. Let's be real about it. Slight issue, with the pickup being so overwound with, uh, with copper, it doesn't quite fit through the pickguard. So I'm just going to widen up the pickguard hole just a little bit and see if it fits. Alright, got it in. Uh, just had to sand the edges of the pickguard just a little bit. It was only a hair, but it just wasn't fitting properly. I probably have to lower the pickup down because I'm expecting a, probably a significant pull on the strings considering, like, it's, it's pretty strong. 
So it's time for the comparison between the standard low output 8K ohms pickup with the ridiculously super high output one. In the room it was noticeably louder, um, significantly so, to the point that it was kind of uncomfortable because I'm trying to record this at a low volume or low enough volume. It, it was loud, much louder than the initial set and that's to be expected because the output of the pickup is super high. But the effects are even more noticeable when we compare the clean setting or what used to be clean. So a significant difference, the clean is essentially gone. And just a reminder, these are the same exact amp settings and mic placement, everything is the same except for the pickup. The amp is on the 15 watt setting, it's not a super high headroom amp, but it's higher than the 7 watt setting that I set it to for the solo section that I'm going to play in a minute. And obviously there is a significant difference in the level of distortion between the 8k ohm pickup and the 54k ohm pickup. but what I noticed in the recording, more so than in the room, was the loss of highs. And through a bit of Google searching, I found that this had something to do with resistance. The more wines on the pickup, which this particular pickup has a lot of wines of copper, uh, the less highs are going to get through, and that is evident here. Let's compare a more dirty rhythm track. <laughs> It was very compressed and uh, not a whole lot of definition in those notes either. Now I think where this pickup shines is the leads. In this demonstration the amp is set to 7 watts, so lower headroom, it's going to break up earlier, uh, so this pickup is going to add a little bit more. And I feel like the compression and the darkness of the notes make it a little bit easier to play. Compression makes everything a little bit easier to play, so the natural compression there makes the solos feel kind of like it's on a, a high gain neck pickup, which is my preference for soloing anyway. <laughs> So how do I conclude? It's a strange one, it's more of an experiment than anything else, but it was a fun one. It's probably safe to say that the pickup is 
just a tad too hot. And I think most people would agree with me. Probably even the manufacturers who named the pickup after Nigel Tufnell. It goes to 11. But if I've learned anything in my time, it's the guitar players are very strange and they don't agree on anything. So there is probably someone out there who absolutely despises this pickup and there's probably someone on the complete other end who thinks this is the dream pickup. I could see it probably being used if, uh, if someone had it like in a neck pickup and they switch to neck pickups for leads or something. It's kind of like an always on tube screamer sound. So that might be cool. That might be a, a use case for this, but it is certainly not for everybody. But anyway, there is a link to this pickup and the other more standard pickups from Algri. Algri, I'm one of those is right. I'm sure I can't read. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.